everybody and welcome back to Musings by Nikki. I am here today to um, make the soft cover <laughs> for our book series that we're working on, our nature book series. However, this cover is just something that's totally transferable and you could use it for whatever project that you're working on right now. This is just going to be two different ways that I make a soft cover. Um, so uh, we're going to make two covers, even though we only have one signature. I know. But um, I wanted to try using the cover piece that comes with the kit. So this is the piece that's, I mean, with the kit, it actually says cover. So you can get it to print out at a couple different sizes. So this is that kit. This is from Paper Craftivity. It's the Woodland Diaries kit that we've been using. That, that along with all the other kits, I'm gonna have linked in our description box just because I keep getting questions. So I'm just gonna, I just decided I'll put them down there, which I should have done from the beginning anyway. So we're gonna make a paper covered one and then we're gonna make a cloth covered one because honestly, guys, that's my absolute fave is cloth cover covered journals because I love the texture and this fabric that we're gonna use has this lovely like chenille um, design on it and it's just got great hand feel. So then I've also pulled out some uh, natural muslin. This one I have not coffee stained. It's just one of the natural like unbleached ones. So it's got the little speckles which gives it some extra fun character. And let's see, what else do I have pulled out? I've got the cover piece here pulled out. Then I have a, um, a liner page for the fabric cover journal that we're gonna make. And then I have my two pieces of um, cardboard. Now these are the back pieces in case you didn't see my other videos, in case you're just joining me for this one. These are the, the back page of a 12 by 12 paper pad. Um, I always, I always keep those because they make lots of good things. Like I can use them in my um, scan and cut and make stencils. So um, they work great for that. But they also, because, because look at, they have this glossy. So if you cut, a lot of them have this glossy thing. So if you cut them out, it's great for using as a stencil because you can kind of lightly wipe this down. Um, that's a total aside. Pro tip. <laughs> and not that I'm a pro. Um, so I always save these though because they make, they're, they're awesome for making flexible, soft sided uh, journal covers, right? This one's a little thicker, this one's a little thinner, but they're all roughly the same weight usually. The, so the backs and the covers of paper pads. Um, so I've got those pulled out. And uh, here's, here's our hardcover that we made in my last video and the end papers and everything. So I'm gonna set that aside. And then here is our soft, our, our single signature that we're gonna make a soft cover for. So if you remember, this was made up of some extra pages I printed and then the pages that we pulled out of our two chunky signatures <laughs> to make less chunky signatures. So that's our single signature. So let's get to work guys. We've got a lot to accomplish here. The first thing I'm gonna do is pull out my paper cutter because we need to cut these down to size. So um, our book, our, sig our signature, measures <clears throat> five, and then because you know it's not all sucked in yet and there's a little bit of overage here, so it measures like five and a quarter by seven, almost exactly. So we want um, our cover to come just past that and just a little bit longer so that uh, so that we have our pages protected, right? Because these little corners and these edges and stuff, we want them protected. Plus we want to be able to tie around without crushing things and stuff. So we want ours to be a little bit bigger. So we're gonna go, so if it was seven inches exactly tall. We want to go, and you can't see this, sorry that this is all gonna be a little out of frame here, but I'll tell you exactly what I'm doing, just write my, my measurements down here, but I can't smash that way. Anyway, uh, if it's seven inches tall, we wanna go just taller than that, right? But we don't wanna go too tall because as we wrap fabric around the edges of this and stuff, um, it'll add a little bit of height as well. So what I'm gonna do is go seven, uh, I don't wanna do seven and a quarter, I'll go, 
seven and like three eighths. Okay, that just gives us a little bit of playroom on top and bottom. And then our book is five inches, well, I said five and a quarter. So then that means opened up, it's 10 and a half, right? Five and a quarter and five and a quarter, 10 and a half. So we want our book to be, or our pages, her cover. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be one of those days. So we want it to be just slightly longer than that. So 10 and a half is our actual signature. So we're gonna go 10 and a half. We're gonna go 10 and like just shy of 10 and three quarters, I think I'll go. Oh no, let's see. I'll go just over 10 and three quarters. Cal, think about this, Nikki. I always say, right? Um, cut bigger than you think. If you're if you're questioning yourself, cut bigger than you think because otherwise uh, you can always put, you can always take off, but you can't put back on. Okay, then we're gonna cut this one the same size. So I said ten, seven and like three eighths. You guys, it's super cold here today. Hold on, let me not, I'm, I was just about to start a story right while I'm trying to measure and cut. That's a bad idea. 10, and what did I say? Just like three quarters. Just over three quarters, right? Okay, hopefully I did that right. If not, we're leaving it in and I'll recut something because, you know, um, I'll save these little scrappy pieces. You know, there's always something. They work for, well, probably not these, but these work for the tag backs and stuff like that. So into the scrap bin. So we've got our two uh, covers. Let's try putting a fold in one just to check. Ooh. Bone folder for this one. Oh my gosh, there's somebody out for a walk. That's insanity. Do you wanna know what my phone said this morning? I'm gonna insert a picture right here of what my phone said this morning, cause I screenshotted it. not crazy <laughs> is that not crazy our wind chill is negative 43 that's just insane that's a that's a lot of really cold okay perfect it comes let's see can I show you right now without anything on it it comes just slightly above our signature and it does the same on the bottom just slightly below and then on the edges, it gives us protection. So when I go like this, I can feel the edges right there, but I can also feel that it's smooth. So if we, you know, wrap a closure around, it's not gonna be smashing pages or anything. So that is a good size. That's what we want. Okay, so now let's do, let's do the paper covered one first. So I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna go ahead and trim the edges off of this, but I have a feeling we're gonna to need to trim a little bit closer. Um, because I'm not, I should have measured the size of this cover, what it prints out to. I've never done this. I've had a couple of kits that came with like a cover, but I've just always used them, um, you know, as part of the, as part of the kit or part of the book or something because I like making fabric covers so much. I figure we're gonna do, I've done paper covered soft covers, so. Oh, it's actually a little bit smaller. So what I was thinking I was gonna do the way I would normally do this will work out just fine. Ta-da! Okay, so um, let's, 
before I do anything else because otherwise I know I will forget and then I'll be irritated with myself. So I'm going to give this an inking. Okay. Cool. So I love that it has this wider um, thing here in the middle because that's where we're going to score to make kind of that flexible spine thing. So, okay, now we've got this um, cut out. So we're going to cover, much like we did the hard cover, we're going to cover this and wrap it around. But what we're going to do is cover this side. Actually, I don't know about this barcode right here. It might show through the fabric. So we'll probably cover this side, which is fine, and wrap it around. And then we'll put this over the top like we would a liner page. And since it's a little bit short on the ends, I might put some lace or something there. We'll see when we get there. So this is a humongous piece and a smarter woman would have cut this down to size. So I wasn't trying to wrangle this giant humongous piece of like yardage on my table, but you know, why, why not? Why not just do the hot mess crafting and just give myself a nice challenge. So because we're gonna be putting that, um, because we want this to wrap over really good on the sides here, I'm gonna give myself, usually with the hardcover, I give myself an inch and a half. Here I'm gonna try and give myself like two, at least two, maybe two and a half inches. So I'm gonna, oh my gosh, you guys. This is like trying to do a full size bed sheet <laughs> on my little crafting space and stay under the camera somehow. This is about to make it way easier at least. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Seriously, I think that is the size of a full size bed sheet or at least a twin. Oh my gosh comic relief for you all this morning. Okay. Um, well, it's this morning where I am right now. Now I'm going to give myself a goodly amount over here and strings because ripping fabric, although I, I love the sound of ripping fabric. Okay. Is it just me or do you guys like that sound too? I love it. Okay, so now we've got our fabric cut wide enough that we should be able to, oh, let's check and see if that shows through. Yep, it shows right through. You can even see that on camera. So we will, we will be using this side uh, as the outside where we put our thing on. Because even though it's a little bit short, it still covers that. So this will be our inside. And for right now, it will just be muslin on the inside, but we might put pockets in there or something when we get to that point, okay? But for right now, it's just gonna look like muslin because that's what it is, it's muslin. All right, now we need our good old PBA. Um, I had to grab my brush up here. So this is my uh, neutral adhesive, my PVA glue that I have been using. My buddy, my friend, uh, you've heard me talk about it in other videos. I've still got my same styrofoam plate going here. So we're gonna put a little bit of the glue out. Whoops, geez, that could have ended way worse than it just did. Uh, okay, so with this one, we're gonna do, because we only have like, you know, two sides. With the hardcover, we did the spine first and stuff. Um, we only have two sides. We're going to kind of work in the same way. We're gonna do the spine first, um, but we don't really have like a spine necessarily. I just mean we're gonna do the middle is what I really mean. So we're gonna get some glue. Now, in my last video, when we were making the hardcover spine, I where I had to re-record the first part of it. Yeah, that was, that still is making me irritated that I did that somehow. Um, I talked about using muslin now, or like a calico or a thinner fabric because it is thin, the glue will bleed through really, really easily if you don't have an extremely thin and even coat, okay? So 
I'm going to take my extra time here to make sure that that is a really thin, even coat. I'm going to make sure that I'm somewhat straight. Okay. So now I'm not pressing hard. I'm just trying to smooth over the top. I don't want to push the fibers down and then get the glue to smush up, right? Even though I put a thin layer. And I'm not going to use my tool to like burnish it really heavily or anything because again, I don't want it to cause the glue to want to smush up through there at all. Okay. So now we're going to do the same thing uh, that we did the same way. I'm not going to do this whole cover at once again uh, because I really want to make sure that I'm getting a nice thin coat. I'm going to be really careful about pushing up against this edge here because I don't want to you know, inadvertently smash glue through or put too much glue along that edge. So I'm going to be really careful there and just work up to it, but not paste along the side of it. If you are using, and you'll see when we're using the upholstery fabric later to make the fabric covered one, you will see that you can be a little more generous with the glue. Okay, again, smoothing, not pushing, just smoothing. I'm able to smooth and get most of the wrinkles out, but I'm not pushing hard. Okay, so I'm gonna finish doing this side with you guys, and then just for the sake of time, I'm going to just fast forward through doing the other side of this book, that, that side. Because um, you get what I'm saying, right? Thin, even coats. There she goes back, that walker lady. She walks every day though, more power to her. It's too cold for me to go for a walk today. Whoa. The actual temp is, was negative 24, right? Negative 43 wind chill. What the actual heck? And our temps aren't going to, our highs, our forecast, the highs in our forecast don't get it above negative 11 for the next week. So that's where I live, guys. Okay, like I said, I'm going to uh, fast forward through me doing this side. Okay, guys, there we go. So we've got it glued down all the way around. I'm, I'm happy with that. There's no like big bubbles or anything. So pretty smooth, we're looking good. Now we're going to miter our corners. Um, oh, hold on, let me grab my fabric scissors because you know, those are my paper craft scissors and they just do not do the same. The reason we're doing this is to reduce bulk in the corner. You'll notice that I'm not going straight up to the corner. I'm leaving myself a little room to fold over and work over that corner. It's the same like I did on our hardcover book. I don't wanna go straight up to the edge. I just want to go close. Okay. Let me put this. All right. Um, because we're doing a paper, I forgot to grab this out. Do I have a piece still? Please say I have one right at hand. Um, because we're doing a paper cover here, and I do have some fabric, but I want to put a strip of Tyvek here. I'm going to go grab some. Oh, no, I've got some right here. Okay, I thought I still had it sitting out. I'm gonna grab a piece of Tyvek. It's the same stuff that we were using. Ooh, it's the last one in here. Um, when we were making our uh, hardcover journals, this Tyvek is just gonna help because this is where we're sewing our signatures through. And I really, you know, this is now once you fold paper, 
it loses some of its strength. And we've got it reinforced with fabric on the, you know, this side, on the inside. And we've got, it'll be reinforced up to here. But again, I like to do overkill. I like to make sure that our books are gonna last as long as people want them to last. So we're gonna glue down a strip of Tyvek here. It doesn't need to be fancy. It doesn't need to be, <laughs> you know, cut straight. Like I just whacked it with my scissors there. Um, but I'm putting some more glue out. But we're gonna reinforce it. The other one is gonna have um, a thicker fabric on it. So we may or may not. Well, we probably will. Who am I kidding? I like to do a little overkill. Okay, so I'm getting a good layer down here. And we're just gonna smash that tie back into it. Tie back, you guys, you can order it on Amazon. If you missed that video, if you're just joining me here, uh, you can get, these are the same thing that are here, our mailers are made out of, like the post office or UPS, sometimes FedEx mailers are made out of this. Um, it's that indestructible, non-rippable paper product. It's the same stuff they wrap our houses in before they put siding on. This corner isn't quite there. There we go. All right. So we've got that. Now I feel better that our spine is gonna be, you know, really well protected. So now we're gonna flip up our covers, just like we did with the hardcover book. We're gonna do the top and the bottom edges here first, and then we'll work the sides and the corners. So I'm gonna put a goodly thin layer here. Goodly thin, but you thought I was gonna say goodly generous. Usually that's how you would use that word, but alas, I use my language skills however I darn well want. <laughs> okay, I am making, again, it's a little harder to see my glue layer here because I'm gluing white glue on white cardstock, but okay, now I'm smoothing up and over. This is a little bit more difficult to do when you're doing it with this because again, I don't want to smash it in to my glue. I don't want to make, but I do want to make it nice and straight. So you kind of want to pull, you know, I'm pulling with my thumbs just slightly around that edge, but I don't want to smash this part where you will still see a little bit. I don't, I don't want to smash that through. So just being cautious. Okay, I think I'm good with that. And give myself a visual of how far. Okay. You know, thank God for my, on these cold days, thank God for my husband and kids who go out and stoke our wood stove too. Because boy, these are not the days that we want to be messing with not having enough fire in our stove. I got a good one, guys. He's a good guy. Not only did he stoke the wood stove, but he worked hard to recover that last video. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So we're going to see the Tyvek because this thin is this thin. This fabric is kind of thin. You can see the Tyvek right through that. But I think our cover image should cover most of it. Yeah, I'm not even worried. Okay, now we're going to do the sides. So this is where we have to work these corners in and we're just going to work them in with my fingers. I've seen lots and lots of different ways that people do this. Okay, I am going to give myself a generous amount of glue down here and then I'm going to make my thin layer along here. 
And then I'm going to give myself a generous amount and I'm painting inside that fabric and along the outside of it and everywhere because I need to work that that these corners up and I want them to be neat and stay like that for years to come. So now I'm going to start with my finger and just start pushing it up towards right towards the center like this. And then I'm going to, we're doing a, th a thinner fabric this time, so I'm going to fold this fabric over just slightly, okay, and tack it down. Now I'm going to have to come back with more glue on that, and that's fine. I got to get this side done, though. I'm going to push this into the center here, so I'm going into the diagonal like that, and then I'm going to use my fingers to kind of wrap it around and just fold a little tiny edge on here. Oops, my glue's drying. Okay, smash it in, fold an edge. It does not have to be a big edge. You're not doing like a seam allowance or anything. Okay, now I need to get some more glue under there. Again, I would rather put, you know, I can always add glue, but I can't take glue away. That one's pretty good. Okay, and then I gotta get this free edge up here. And I want this to be fairly flat and not bubbly because we're gonna be putting paper over it, remember? Although the more I think about it, I kinda wanna put cheesecloth behind it. Not gonna lie. Want I like I like cheese cloth. Okay. That needs a little more right there. Okay. So there's one side, corners done, right? Nice and neat. Now we'll do the other side um, for the sake of time again. Oh, gluey fingers. I'm gonna fast forward through this. If you saw me in the video there, I cut off this little bit of edge because I realized it was a factory edge. And so those are a little bit thicker and um, I didn't want that thickness there. So I just kind of snipped it off and there we go. I've got my corners all kind of neatly tucked. So we've got our cover. This will be our front and then we're going to put this down over it. Yeah, that'll look nice. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna do cheesecloth because I think that's just gonna fray on the edges. You know, I'm kind of thinking in my head as I go here. But, do I, I, my options are, I could put some lace or something, which I think I have some that I've like used in the book a little. I could put some lace here along that edge, but I'm kind of inclined yeah, no, I think I'm not gonna because I might drop an eyelet through these actually and use that as our tie. So um, as our closure. So I'm going to leave that option available to myself. 
Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead and glue this down. So, oops, it's already starting to glue down slightly. Let's give it a nice good, a nice good coat here. Oh, I'm gonna need more glue. Oop. All right. So I'm gonna give myself a nice good coat and I'm not gonna go right up right too close up to the edges because I don't want it smooshing out you know when you put down when you put down uh, paper and it's got too much glue on the back and it smushes out so when I get to the edges I'm using more of a dry brush leave the majority of the glue in the center and uh, that's okay because I, I do believe I'm gonna sew around the edges of this that's the other nice thing about using the backs of paper pads is that they're thin enough that if you have a, you know, a, a good enough machine, a heavy duty enough machine, most machines will do it. You can actually just sew right through the layers and uh, you might have to put on a, whoo, something just fell in my closet. Um, you might have to put on like a heavy duty needle or something, but okay. <laughs> All right, now we're just going to do our best to line this guy up. Oh, geez. Nope. I went to go. Oh, oh, come up, come up, come up. I'm going to need to put more glue on, aren't I? Yeah. Shoot, that's okay, though, because I was way too uh, high on the bottom, and it was, it was way too close. I thought I had more leeway, but I don't. So that's okay. That's okay. I'm glad it peeled off in one piece. This could have been a disaster. Okay, it's, ah, that's still pretty tacky. We're good. Okay, this has got to go right down to the bottom. Like that. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Smooth, smooth, smooth. Burnish, burnish, burnish. Just making sure that all that paper connects with all that fabric. Okay, boom, boom. Um, I'm gonna let this dry. I'm gonna go stick it underneath my big dictionary book over there to dry, make sure it dries nice and flat. And I'll be right back and we'll start the fabric covered one. All right, hang on. Okay guys, we're back. We're going to um, cover the second one and it's gonna be covered with fabric and then it will have um, a paper liner on the, on the inside. The difference with this is, this one we're, is gonna be a little like quick and easy because we're not going to wrap all the fabric around. We are going to leave a raw edge that I'm gonna cut with my pinking shears and then this will come up along there and um, then I'll just sew around the edges of it, okay? So I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let me grab my pinking shears. Pinking shears, in case you don't know, are um, a special kind of fabric scissors that uh, make a zigzag cut right they're zigzag teeth like that so they make a zigzag cut and it prevents well it doesn't prevent fraying but it cuts down greatly on fraying um and this as you can see <laughs> likes to fray but the sewing will also accomplish that so we'll do a little bit of both 
I'm going to at first here, just because I'm dealing with a huge big hunk again, I'm gonna just whack down a, a little bit bigger than I need piece, and then we'll deal with the cutting it specific in a second here. Okay, so now we've got our, this is that, it's got a great feel to it, guys. So that's our fabric that we're gonna use for the outside cover. For the inside cover, we're going to be using this lovely bird paper, which I absolutely adore. Isn't that so fun? Um, but we're also gonna back this with uh, a piece of, we're gonna back that, excuse me, with a piece of mu muslin. So we'll have that peeking out around the edges. Okay, just getting rid of some of that excess. So I'm gonna set this aside for a sec. And this, I like the ripped edge look. So we're going to rip down, and I'm just trying to leave like a millimeter on all sides, because what I want is just enough that will peek out beyond the book. So I'm gonna, it would be smart if I cut on this edge rather than eyeball it. Okay. Now, before we do any of this, we're going to cut ourselves a piece of, I'm gonna put away my fabric scissors so I don't inadvertently use those on Tyvek. And, okay, now we will pull our glue back down here. And since I don't have a fold in this one, I'm just guessing middle. But we're gonna glue this down here. And this is again just added. Now this one has two layers of fabric. So those two layers of fabric should do a lot to protect our spine over the years, but you never can be too safe. If you don't have Tyvek, you could also just put a piece, another piece of paper here and another piece of paper here. You could always use a, a one of your like, you know, cut off strips of fabric um, on the not on this side because you would see it through, but you could use it on the side with the heavy upholstery fabric because you wouldn't see it through and that would just be another layer of protection there for your where we're gonna stitch through eventually. Okay, so the one difference on this one is that before we go gluing on our fabric and stuff, we're gonna score it because we can't score it once we've got our fabric on. Well, we probably could try but that would be hard. So I have my scoreboard out and we are looking at just where I cut it, just, just about a little over 10 and three quarters. So that means our center of our signature is gonna be five, oh my gosh, five and then like three, three eighths or something. So it doesn't have to be exact because we're gonna run several of these. So I'm gonna just score, score. And then I'm gonna go over to the next one and score four more. One, two, three, whoops. That one got a little crazy, slow down, three, Okay, now we're going to go on the other side of that one that I did, that I called middle, and do four on this side. One, and I'm going every single slot. Two, three, four. Now the reason we're doing this is 
because we want, you know, we don't have a spine necessarily. If you don't have a board, a scoreboard, um, you can use, like if you have any of the other We Are Memory Keepers uh, punch boards or something. Let me grab my, let me grab one out here. Oh, I've got a basket of them. This, like this is the envelope one and it has one score. You could try to score along the edges of that. You can, some of them have a little bit bigger score. Um, or you could just take this over the edge of your desk. So fold it right in the middle and then you could take it over the edge of your desk like I'm going to do here, which is going to be hard for you to see, but I'm going to just roll it over to turn this into kind of a flexible spine. So I'm just kind of rolling it over. And at every one of the creases, I'm just kind of folding it a little. I'm not giving it any one really firm crease. I just want it to be, you know, like a roll top desk. That's what I want it to be. <laughs> if you know what a roll top desk is. Okay, strange. I don't know why my camera just stopped right there. Um, but here we go. See how it's rounded now? And it looks like a roll top desk. That means it will accommodate our signature better. If you just had a single fold, um, it would it would want to, you know, like smash everything in, and it makes it harder to sew this through. This way, it accommodates a wider signature better. Okay, so that's what we're going for. But we wouldn't be able to do that once we put our fabric on. So there, that's why we're doing it now. All right, now I'm going to just, um, I'm going to fast forward through this part because now I have no idea since my camera stopped and restarted how long I've been going. All I'm going to do is the same thing we did before where I glued this down and uh, then I'm going to, I'll be right back. What I forgot to mention is you don't have to be so careful like I got a little leg straw on this side but that's okay um, you don't have to be as careful about this layer you know being super thin and whatever because we're gonna put paper over it um, now we're gonna put the outside we're gonna do this on here this again you want to be careful that you are not putting too much glue on because it can still even though this is a thicker fabric it's still fabric and you can get, you know, glue coming through. Um, but you can put a little bit thicker layer. Matter of fact, with this one, I want a little extra. And this this time I'm going to start on the edge. Um, you want a little extra because, whoops, call. Now I'm just being sloppy. Because you want to get, make sure that we're getting all of that, um, like, pile down into some glue. The reason I am starting on the edge here is because I want to make sure that I get uh, there. Is because I had that extra over there and I just all of a sudden I was like, you know, I'm just going to make sure I don't go in the center with this one. Although I forgot I cut it so big. So since we have all this extra, it's not a big deal. Now I'm pushing down a little bit harder because I want to get, see how it's got this, you know, weave and this extra threads and stuff. I want to make sure all of that stuff is getting some good contact back there. I didn't put on too much and I'm not too worried about it seeping through. So there then we're just gonna work our way across i'll probably fast forward this there's no reason for you to watch me work my way across gluing i'll be right back okay guys so there we go 
we've got our big piece glued on and we've got our muslin glued on and we've got our Tyvek behind there. Now we're going to use our scissor to cut our pinking shear and I'm going to cut right up to the edge of my muslin. That's how it's gonna look, like that. Now, you could, if you wanted to, you could do the folded over thing like this, right? And have a fabric cover that way. I've done that way. Um, I kinda like this look. This is one of the looks that I like. Plus, if you're a beginner, this is probably the easiest way to deal with a thicker upholstery cover like this because um, you you literally just don't, you just sew around it. You don't have to worry about, and you wouldn't even have to sew around it. You could just make sure that your glue is good right up to the edges. Um, and then once it's dry, go around and try lifting it up and make sure that it's, you know, all the way glued down all the way around. Okay, pinking shears do make a lot of little scrappy-doos though, especially on this kind of fabric. So I'm gonna go um, around like this quick and get all my little bits and scraps as best I can. Okay, so that's what our edge looks like now, right up against the, up against the uh, muslin, that's what it looks like. And we've got our folds in there, our rounded, foldy spine there. So I am going to, um, well, we're going to put this paper in there. So maybe we could cut our paper down. Uh, yeah, because I'm going to, I'm going to sew around the edges of the paper is what I'm going to do. Um, so let's see. I am going to, what I'm going to do here is because I don't, want to measure, I just want to mark. And I have to remember that I've got this extra little flappy over here. So I got to kind of measure. I just want this to be just inside the muslin. So I'm going to put a mark there and then I'm going to put a mark where I want it on the bottom. Like there, okay. That one, because I have fabric, I'm gonna do this all kinds of wonky and backwards here, but we're gonna get it done. That one, because I have fabric and glue on both sides like that, it um, doesn't wanna curl up. So if I were not doing this, on camera, I would probably put it to dry for a while underneath the book, but we're just going to keep on working here. Where's my mark? Is that my mark? Yeah. I should be doing it this way. Okay. Hopefully that's right. Looks good. So I've got my extra flap is on that side now. Okay, fast forward, I'm gonna ink. All right, guys, you saw I also rounded the edges just cause I like that's kind of a little finished look there. Okay, so we've got our layers, our layers, our layers. I'm not going to worry about scoring this sheet because we scored the cover and so it'll just kind of bend to that score as we um, work with it, right? So I'm going to make sure that my little extra fabric is on that edge and we're going to glue this down. Uh, I'm going to, whoa, good thing that's going on the inside. Um, <laughs> 
I'll fast forward this process too. There's no reason you need to watch me paste yet another thing down. Bear up back. Okay guys, so there we go. This has got, I wish you could feel it. It has such a nice feel to it. It's still flexible, right? But it has some heft and some weight to it. So it's gonna protect, protect our journal, um, but it, it also just has a really great hand feel because of those layers that we've done on there so far. So what I'm gonna do right now is take it to the sewing machine um, and I'm gonna sew around the edges here and it will show up on the outside as well, which is totes okay, because that's what we're going for. Um, I'm gonna sew around the edges and then I will be right back. Okay, guys. So I have sewn around the actual book or the um, paper twice. I just kind of went haphazardly. And then I went once right around the edge of the fabric. And you can't see it too much on the front cover here, which is fine. Um, you know, kind of going for rustic in this anyway, nature journal. But you can uh, see that I went right along the edge here. Well, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can kind of. Um, and that's just to help from too much fraying. So some fraying is going to happen, right, like this. And sometimes with a book, I try to get as much of that off in advance as I can because I don't want it to go to somebody in a new home and all looks like it's falling apart. Um, but it, that that extra little stitch that I put in there is going to help uh, prevent it from going any further than that. Okay, there's another little bit there. So we've got that cover is essentially done. Um, and then let me go grab the other cover that's been drying under our book over here. There we go. And um, I'm going to go run a stitch around the edge of this as well, and I'll be right back. There is our sewn cover there, and I decided it needed some zigzag stitches there too. Um, so we're going to score this one too, and we're just going to, since I did the zigzag stitches, we're just going to score in between this, the zigzags there. So... And this will be a little difficult to see where I need to be scoring and to stay in the score marks. No, that's okay. We'll we'll do it. It's just the uh, it's the thought that counts right here. <laughs> so I scored it, and then I created our little roundy spine there. So that is the cover of this one. This that is that is this cover. So it fits good. It's right up against our pages, but it's got just enough edge that it'll protect them and on the top and bottom as well. That's how that one would look. And then you can decorate the inside however you want. And then this guy, let's give it its bend back a little here. I'm just going to Mush it over the edge here a little. This guy goes inside this book like so. And I love that too. And it's got just enough on the edges and stuff. So there we go. This is our t our soft cover journals and it'll open up and look like that. So pretty. Um, I mean, you could decide to do it the other way too and have that be the outside. Although I like the upholstery fabric on the outside. So there's our two book covers, soft covers. Now we made two. So you have the option of doing it, you know, with this, with the cover, if you're following along and this is still wanting to curl up. So I'm going to, now that I've sewn it, I'm going to go put it right back under that heavy book and help it uh, dry a little flatter because I can tell it's still a little bit um, damp from all the glue. 
So I'm going to stick these both under there and just let them do their thing and dry flat for a while. Um, but there's our two options, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Uh, um, this video is probably long by this point. And so <laughs> um, next time I see you, we will be binding books. We'll be doing binding into the single signature here, and we'll be binding our um, hidden spine into our hardcover. And then we, we're in the closing stretch after that, guys. It's just some decorating and last details and then we've got a finished book this is being so fun um i really do enjoy this <clears throat> excuse me so guys i hope you have a wonderful morning afternoon evening or middle of the night whatever time it is wherever you're watching from <laughs> on this wonderful planet of ours and uh until i see you guys next time take care be safe Hope you're healthy. Hope you're being able to stay crafty and be peaceful. And uh, I hope you are having, well, I, don't, I was going to say a nice weekend, but uh, you might not be seeing this on the weekend. So <laughs> just hope you're having a lovely day. And uh, until I see you guys, take care and God bless you. All right. Bye-bye.